appreciate, and I swear, I'm not here to do, you know, life lessons, you know, but that, I, I can impart that to you guys. You know, that's something WWE guys, WWE guys struggle with every day. And like I said, it's uh, it's kind of a sad statement that they don't realize that, they, you know, they were the best years of their life until they're looking back on it and wish they'd appreciated it more. Um, but yeah, I do call this thing little things, all right? Uh, if you are looking for little things, and I don't want, if I have one recurring thing I talk about that bothers me, and I know I said it on Holy Foley, but uh, you guys, most of you came in as wrestling fans, most of you have been wrestling fans. It's all right if you're not, sometimes it makes it easier in some ways. Certainly less heartbreaking than if you are. Uh, you know, do you know why I'm a stickler about the back body drop? Does anyone know this? All right, because how many times during the course of a show, and I'm, I'm not here to pick apart what people do, one of the most common things we see is somebody bending down, right? And then once he's bending down, then you can do a, a hundred things, a hundred two, I don't know. I mean, you can leapfrog, you know, you can kick him, you know, slide under, punch, school, all these things. The problem is, there's only one reason someone should be bending down in a match. And what's that reason? The back, back, the back body drop. There's no other move that requires you to bend down, right? And if it's got a success ratio of nearly zero, <laughs> you would have to wonder why people would be so stupid to bend down, take their eyes off the guy, and you know, you give a back body drop. Do we have anyone who wants to take a back body drop in here? Anyone? All right. I, I, I know it's a tough move, uh, but if somebody could do it and it's not going to be me, trust me. All right. All right. Uh, who's taking it? Who's receiving it? I'll take it. Okay. Take good it. job. All right. All right. All right. Watch this back body drop. Do you want to go this way? Whichever way you want. Just, uh, I got a couple friends here coming in here. It's a little bit late. We're just, uh, Somebody's gonna kick him, he's kicking the guy who's like this. Not a guy who's like this. <laughs> like on his hands and knees. And I know like you don't see it that much anymore, which is why every time I see AJ Styles take one of those phenomenal backdrops, I'm like, oh thank goodness somebody's taking a backdrop. Like I think there should be a backdrop in the first match of every wrestling show, and I would love to see it be a finishing move. Just do a step. <laughs> Rip Rogers, I mean, Rip Rogers would do it in language far more colorful than I use, you know? Because I don't think I'm going to drop a single left bomb on you guys. Rip would be up in the teens already, all right? Probably but in 20s. One of the things he'll say, and I would say, if you do one thing, uh, one thing to improve your knowledge of wrestling, follow Rip Rogers on Twitter. It's like getting a free lesson in wrestling psychology, you know? If, you, if you're okay with the language, you know? Yeah. Okay? You're not easily offended. Follow Rip Rogers. He's one of the most talented guys to never actually make it big. And Rip will say, what you still do on the, on the, on the uh, preliminary matches, I know it's hard because, and I'm going to be skipping over and coming back to things, right? Like I look at matches that people thought were really good by the standards of the day, and they might not hold up because there is a kind of a formula where in order to have a great match, you have to have killer false finishes. You know what I mean? Like if you don't have 10 or 15 really close false finishes, even my son, my youngest son, when he describes the matches he likes to see, I'm like, uh, you pretty much say it, fast moving, lots of false finishes, great athleticism. You're not a fan of dad's work, are you? <laughs> uh, and I, but I think one of the things that, was, that is, we miss when everybody has to 
subscribe to the same theory of having a great match is A, the card can suffer. It's understandable everyone wants to have a great match, you know, and, and man, like, it's also harder because uh, the PGA to suspend disbelief when I was around is we didn't have MMA on right afterwards. You know, like things like shooting Irish whips seem kind of more logical once you realize that it's never been used in the history of MMA, right? I was lucky enough to be inducted into the uh, Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame, which is different than the WWE Hall of Fame. I was trying to think of a way to make my speech different. So I don't know if you guys know this, I had some, um, my hip replaced and my knee replaced and I worked on my handwriting. I wanted my handwriting to be neater. So every day I worked three or four hours on my handwriting. And when I came down to, uh, came down to writing a speech, I wanted the Hall of Fame to have something they could keep. So I wrote it in my neatest handwriting, kind of like a pseudo calligraphy, and I did it in verse, from A to Z, about all the people I was thanking. And I think I just randomly mentioned one of the guys there who, you know, enhancement talent, you can call them job guys if you want, as long as you understand that that is a term to be used with respect. They're the guys who make us look good. So I think I was picking out Frogman LeBlanc, who took a ticking and kept on, kept, took a licking and kept on ticking in the old uh, world-class territory. And I said, Frogman, Frogman LeBlanc, so-and-so, you're why I'm standing here today. I've never seen an elbow drop that worked in MMA. You know, like, <laughs> so we, we count on these people to make us look good. And if guys in the beginning of the show, going back to what Rip said, if we see a submission, and Pablo, I'm not telling you to book your cards this way. People are like, God, Pablo has the most boring cards. Somebody lost via abdominal stretch, small package, you know. But we get into this rhythm where you have to have killer false finishes, and no one actually loses to the false finishes, unless you combine with like five or six things, you know. Um, and so, if you did establish move, certain moves as being painful, certain moves as being effective, and then go back to them later in the show. The same moves that resulted in pinfalls, same things resulted in, in submissions going as false finishes, man, that makes it really easy to get great reactions, you know? It makes it really easy. Uh,